Do you remember when Disney would make movies with no political agenda? Those movies that would always pack theaters or fill the fans' hearts with expectations way before the movies were out? The movies that taught children that they could be themselves and still be the heroes, not just for participating but actually fighting for what is right? Mulan was brave not because she was a woman, or in this case an Asian woman. She was brave because despite being a woman, she sacrificed herself to go to war instead of her old and frail father in a world where every male in families were to join the war to protect the country and Mulan's old father was the only male in their family. Ariel left all that she knew behind to embrace a new life for love. Despite her mistakes and the challenges on her journey, she never gave up and therefore achieved her goal in the human world. Cinderella taught us that kindness is always rewarded and selfishness and being mean do not pay off. You get the gist. Watching these movies as children, We did not care about the color of the skin of the characters or the fact that some of them were not even human. I'm looking at you too, Simba and Ariel. We cared about the message that they had and it is those messages that made us fall in love with the characters and the stories. Fast forward to 2022. Disney unveils their new obese ballerina heroine. Wait, what? Obese ballerina is an oxymoron in itself. Why are we pushing down the throat of children that it is okay to be obese and not just that but you can also be a ballerina if you are obese? What? There are so many things that are wrong with this character and she did spark a lot of mixed reactions. Reflect is a part of a collection of short animations from Disney's Short Circuit experimental film series, a project that Disney has been showcasing on Disney Plus since 2020. This particular animation follows Bianca, a young ballet dancer who battles her own reflection, overcoming doubts and fears by channeling her inner strength, grace and power. At least that is how she is presented. Said like that, it probably sounds better than it actually looks. I watched the animation and I saw none of that. Spoiler alert, but Reflex starts with Bianca dancing in the middle of the room. We first see her points. She dances with no care of who's watching before the class starts. Then, as the instructor enters the room and the other kids as well, like the other kids, she gets to the bar, then the class starts. She then looks at her reflection in the mirror after her instructor cued her to tighten her belly and keep her neck long. As she tightens her big round belly while looking at herself in the mirror, the mirror starts to crack and becomes some type of selling fan or a hand or whatever that is really with multiple mirror pieces now reflecting back herself to her, which scares Bianca at first. The reflections just keep breaking and Bianca starts to dance, which makes a first set of mirror pieces disappear. The more she dances and the more the mirror pieces disappear, which makes her appear more and more brave and again dance as if no one is watching. The animation ends with Bianca dancing from that dark room back into the dance class. Let me tell you, this is one of the dumbest animations I have ever seen in my life. I watched it twice to make sure I was not missing anything, but no, I was not.
As I said earlier, this animation was welcomed with mixed reactions and I have a say for some of them. But before I get there, I'd like to say this. I understand the main idea behind this obese character and I understand the intention for the message that was hoped to be relayed to little girls who are obese and possibly have dreams to become ballerinas one day. But this animation missed all the points that it tried to make and the execution was so poor that it became infuriating. Hilary Bradfield is the director of this shit, I mean, this piece, and Reflect is, as she put it herself, her way to be body positive, accepting your flaws as you constantly have to look in a mirror even when you don't want to. Her hope was for people to watch this and accept themselves and the flaws on their journey and know that sometimes you get to the dark place to get to the good place, which makes the good place much more beautiful. Yeah, except that it is not what the animation does. We start with Bianca dancing confidently by herself, then get shy when the older kids and her instructor enter the room. Then she looks even sadder when she looks at her reflection in the mirror just to see her fat self. They want to tell you this animation is about body dysmorphia and the stigma around it. Well, that is a first lie. Body dysmorphia is not looking at your fat self in a mirror and acknowledging that you're fat. And Bianca definitely does. Well, she knows she is. Body dysmorphia is being anorexic and looking at yourself in the mirror and thinking that you're the fattest person alive. Body dysmorphia is a jacked up bodybuilder looking at themselves in the mirror and thinking they're too small or not muscular enough. According to John Hopkins Medical, body dysmorphic disorder is a mental health problem which causes you to become upset about the appearance of your body so much so it may become overwhelming to the point it would affect your daily life. The symptoms of this illness include checking yourself in the mirror constantly, avoiding mirrors, trying to hide your body avoiding social activities, and some more. We see none of these with Bianca. The proponents of this animation use this mental illness to lie about their agenda for it. They even praise Reflect as empowering. What? How? The majority of America is obese and the population is getting fatter by the day. Obesity doesn't need representation. It is a problem that needs to be eradicated, not be proud of. I was a chubby kid at some point and did suffer bullying because of it. I would even be called pregnant because my belly was so big. I was never obese, but I was definitely getting close. I also did ballet, but at the time I was slimmer. As a chubby kid, I don't remember ever wanting to see chubby heroes or heroines in movies. I knew it was not healthy and I hated being chubby. I also loved food and knew that my way of eating, which included hiding to eat, was the main reason why I was chubby. Luckily, I've developed better eating habits and I am healthier. But coming back to Bianca, I don't find her empowering. At least not in the way she was shown. Being an obese ballerina that does nothing but dances is not empowering. People should stop being lazy and expect to be congratulated just for participating in an activity. Yes, Bianca loves dancing and it is great. Ballet is not just an art, it is a sport first, 
but also she moving as much as ballet dancers do and remaining obese already goes against nature. Wait, what am I saying? The fact that she moves the way she does while being obese is against nature to begin with. You see, ballet is a demanding activity and it puts a lot of strain on your feet. Don't be fooled by those gorgeous points that ballet dancers showcase in those point shoes and other ballet shoes. They all have ugly feet. Don't get me wrong, I will always appreciate ballet dancers' feet and especially their points, but the feet themselves, let's keep honest with ourselves, are not that pretty. Mine were not either and it was mainly because of the calluses, bunions, mini fractures and so on. But there is still beauty in that ugliness and pain. Talking about feet, they are the first thing we see of Bianca, the first scene. She working her beautiful points. Good, then Disney messed up. They put her on point with the slippers. Oh! Listen, I tried to convince myself that they were point shoes because honestly, they do look like point shoes until she joins the rest of the class. None of them are wearing point shoes and classes do not take place with students wearing different ballet shoes. Usually, if you're at point level and are practicing points, you will be with others in the same level as well, and everybody will be wearing point shoes. The whole animation was a pure disaster, putting the poor girl in danger from the first second to the last. What Bianca wears on her feet matters because to be on point, you need some type of support to stand on your toes, which is why point shoes and ballet sneakers have those boxes at the front and a platform that part at the front allowing the ballet dancer to stably stand on. Then when you're on point with the box, only two or four toes depending on how your feet are shaped hold all your weight. This is one reason why ballerinas are thin, or at least should I say it helps to be thin when you go on point because you have lesser weight put on your feet, especially the calf and toes. And because ballet is a very technical and demanding sport, it is also very fast. To perform those moves with grace and agility, you need to be thin because the thinner you are, the lighter you are, and the faster you will also be. Talking about being thin and ballerinas, let's talk more about the reasons why they usually so thin. It is not because of fat phobia or some beauty standards. As I stated earlier, ballet is first and foremost a sport and a very demanding one. I know because I was a ballerina too growing up. Breaking my big toe was what took me out of it. Ay ay ay, the big toe. One of the worst one to break because this is the one you rely on the most in ballet. But I digress. Ballet is a very demanding sport, and as such, it contributes to high energy expenditure, more than the ballet dancer consumes. Combined with a very tight schedule, a professional ballet dancer can only be slim. Also, in order to be lifted up in the air by your partners, as a ballerina, you're required to be light. The people lifting you up do so regularly and fast. They are also human beings that risk injuries anytime they lift you up. 
Sure, they're usually men and therefore stronger, but they do have their limits too. Last but not least, seeing a separation between your body parts is aesthetically better as a ballerina. Separation between your head and shoulders, trunk and legs, arms and forearms, you get the idea. Ballet is not for the teen only, but if you practice it consistently and even toward professional level, you will slim down because that's just the nature of the sport. Now, coming back to reflect, the other inconsistency is her body size with the level of ballet dancing that she is at. First of all, no sane dance instructor who have the obese students perform the stance that Bianca is doing because they will know that they will be putting her in jeopardy more than they will be helping her that way. So she will have to lose some weight to protect her feet, knees, hips, back and entire spine as a matter of fact. Especially given that whenever you go up, you have to come back down and landing is always a critical moment in ballet. You have to learn how to land safely without putting yourself more at risk of injuries. Everything in reflect is just inconsistent with reality. Is the animation as empowering as some people, especially fat acceptance, think? Maybe in their minds, but I don't think so. What would have been empowering would have been to see obese Bianca obsessed with ballet, that she will start taking dance lessons, be seen struggling through the intricacies of being a ballet dancer from training and eating the right foods to support her body in such a strong sport, be seen evolving into the sport and slimming down as she becomes stronger, more flexible, limber, and a better ballerina. Now, Fat acceptance who screamed at me, why does she have to lose weight? Well, my dear, I would answer, weight loss is a byproduct of ballet dancing, especially when you dance long enough to reach the level that Bianca did. Keep in mind that in general, to reach point level, a person needs to have been ballet dancing for at least three years consistently with a minimum of three hours of lessons per week. So there is no way Bianca would have been obese at this point. But anyways, that is how you will have turned this animation into an empowering one because as it is right now, Bianca is just an obese kid who had everything handed to her, even breaking the laws of nature just to please a group of individuals who are trying to convince the world to recognize their lazy lifestyles as natural and uncontrollable. Is reflect glorifying obesity and unhealthy lifestyle? I would not go that far, but it doesn't not glorify obesity either. You see, glorifying obesity will be bringing the focus of the animation to Bianca's body and spread the message that she is XYZ because she is obese. For instance, she is a ballet dancer because she is obese or she is flexible and strong because she is obese and so on. That would have been glorifying obesity and Disney is definitely not doing it with reflect. However, big group of people who saw the trailer and probably never watched the animation do. They're the ones focusing on Bianca's body when the animation is not directly about it. 
but I can see why they do. Even if Disney is not glorifying obesity with Bianca and Reflect, they still miss the mark. Colin Farrell and Emma Stone were banned from smoking when they portrayed Penguin and Cruella Devil respectively in movies rated PG-13 and therefore targeted at children. The reasoning behind the ban was that it may send the message to children that smoking is good or has some good about it, even if it is a villain who smokes. So if Disney themselves banned smoking with the Cruella live action movie, why are they pushing down obesity and unhealthy lifestyles down the throat of children? Because one does not become obese overnight or is born that way. It takes months to years of eating highly processed food uncontrollably and not exercising to get there. We don't showcase alcohol, drug, sex or smoking to children. Why are we showcasing obesity to them? Addiction is addiction regardless of what a person is addicted to and many obese individuals, including children, are addicted to food. A better message to children who be an obese child, navigating life as an obese, struggling with the basic things that life requires of them because of their weight and make the conscious decision to make better lifestyle choices for themselves. Now. Some individuals who try to come at me with that it is an anime doll, why do you care? And I will ask them back the same question. If it is an anime and we shouldn't care about it, why use an obese character and direct it at children to begin with when children are very impressionable? because it was made with care for us to care. Disney's reflect is trash and a waste of time and resource. And this is what happens when you try to appeal to science deniers. Science doesn't care about your feelings and it is definitely not subjective. Obesity is never healthy and no heroes should be portrayed as obese. Obesity is not powerful. It is not empowering. Obesity kills. Thanks for watching Pisties. Train mean. Who is that girl I see? Staring straight back at me When will my reflection show Who I am inside